When I met Professor Dudley, I thought him as having one of those intellectual minds that was tragically too brilliant. Whether it was due to the pressure of trying to outdo himself, or out of complete frustration of being constantly misunderstood, or just out of utter boredom. No matter what the cause, I was quite certain he was mad. And I wasn't alone. That's how his guests talked about him behind his back. They would politely smile and understandably nod their heads during his monthly dinner parties, secretly grateful more for the food than for the company or conversation. I was honored to have been invited more than a few times, knowing that his guest list usually included renowned university professors, independent scholars, and other men of distinction. However, one night, as it did in quite a few occasions, the conversation involved time travel, a subject that Professor Dudley was more than passionate about. This would make most of his guests uncomfortable and cause them to leave earlier than usual. Really? Well, Professor, I suppose I should be off as well. Suit yourself, Philby. Thank you for coming. No, uh, thank you, sir. I'm grateful to be included on your guest list. Yes, I suppose you are. Good night, then. Yes. Um, do you really believe it, sir? Do you really believe that one can travel through time? It's been done. Sir? I've done it, and so have you. We can't avoid time travel. It's our normal state of being. <laughs> of course, but traveling back and forth in time like you suggested tonight, do you believe that's possible? Philby, my friend, it's a certainty. If your mind isn't as tightly sealed as my other guests, you should come with me and see what I've been working on for the last three years. All right. You have an impressive laboratory, Professor. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, look here. What do you think? Well, it looks like one of those horses' carriages, but well, where are the wheels? What's that huge crystal disc in the back? Uh, is that a new kind of engine? It's a time machine. Oh, Dudley, you are mad. A time machine? Yes, my friend, a time machine. This thing? This very thing. This contraption? This framework made of quartz and bronze and ivory? With its levers and its dials and seats in the middle? I promise you, Philby, that on this machine a man can go wherever he likes in time. By working these levers, he can choose his century, his year, his very day. Oh, really, Professor? Like I told you tonight, time is only a kind of space. If we can move about in all other dimensions of space, why not in time, too? Oh, you can't just ride back and forth through time. It's impossible. Well, what of the journeys I've already taken on this little contraption? I'm afraid you've been having a bad dream. Very well. You shall have proof, my friend. How? Just climb on, Philby. Sit in the seat beside me, face these ivory dials, and I'll take you for a little ride through time. Well, you, you mean right now? Right now. In case this thing should take off like the flying horse, are there any, um, any... A any preparations? <laughs> no, Philby. You won't need any luggage on this trip. Not even a toothbrush. You'll be back here in my laboratory in less than a minute. Oh. Oh, um, before you climb aboard, please tell me, what time is it? It's, uh, just half past ten in the evening. Good. Uh, be so good as to leave your watch hanging on that coat rack. Uh, over here? Yes, now, uh, let's get ourselves seated. Right you are. <clears throat> All right, I'm on. Now what? Hold tight. It sways a good deal. I'd hate to lose you. <laughs> I can't be frightened, Dudley. <laughs> and you're braver than I am. Yes. Um, before we start, I just want to adjust this control a bit. Hmm. Is uh, everything shipshape? Tell me. Did you notice anything just then? Only a noise, a, a humming noise, nothing else. And what time is it? You just asked me, Professor. And you told me to leave my watch over there on the... That's odd. My watch has quarter to nine, but... But it was just after ten a moment ago. Oh, there must be something wrong with it. It's only that I touched the lever to test it, and we've gone forward a full day. Twenty-two and a quarter hours, at any rate. Oh, yes, but Dudley, I mean... Finished oh. scoffing, Philby? Yes. Yes, I believe I have. Then hold tight. This will be the real article. I'm ready, Dudley. Good man. Well, say goodbye, Philby. Say goodbye to 1902. We went off with a shattering jolt, with the machine swaying under us. The walls of Dr. Dudley's laboratory 
suddenly fell away. Night was speeding after day, like the flapping of a huge bird's wing. I saw the sun hopping across the sky, leaping swiftly across it every second, and every second marking a day. I saw the moon spinning through her quarter like a ball, from new to full, all in a twinkling of an eye. Trees grew and blossomed like puffs of smoke, then passed away. All for the while we were going faster. Now our pace was a year a second, so that second by second the white snow flashed across the world, and was followed by the brief, bright spring. And still we went on into the future. How do you feel, Philby? Very weak. Very dizzy. Don't let go! Don't fall off! Where are we? How far have we come? We're in 150 and 60 and 70! That's enough! Stop it! I can't stand it anymore! Stop it! Philby, you all right? Yes, I, I believe so. Uh, no broken bones. <laughs> what happened? Not sure. We must have stopped too suddenly. Where are we, Dudley? Look around for yourself. A wide lawn, a beautiful vast garden. I meant geographically. Just where we were when we started. Where my laboratory stood. In the year, Dudley. What is the year now? One hundred thousand and eighty. It seemed absolutely incredible. A dream, and a pleasant one. For the garden in which we found ourselves was beautiful and summery, with an unexpected perfume about it, almost like poutine. At some distance we could see a large and imposing building, and everything was quiet and peaceful, but almost too much so, and a strange, strange sense of strangeness, an incredible strangeness set a shiver up my spine. 100,080. Philby, do you want to go back? Yes, I rather think I do. All right. And maybe now we'll go to 1066 or a million BC. <gasps> Dudley, did you hear that? From over there, in the bushes. It sounded human. Come on! Go! Oh! <gasps> Why? It's a child. It seems to be a very small girl. There's been a beast here of some kind struggled with her. Look at the marks on her arm. Now, my dear, you'll be all right now. You won't be harmed. Of course, she wouldn't understand English. She's motioning us to go with her. What about the animal? Did you see it? No, not a glimpse. Too fast for us. Perhaps we'd better go back, Dudley. The girl seems to be all right now. Leave her like this? Yes, yes, I I've had enough. Well, they haven't, Philby. Because they're here. All around us. They had crept up and sound his feet to surround us. The little people of this era. And the girl we saved was not a child, but a full-grown woman. They all stood four feet high in simple tunics. Beautiful creatures, but terribly frail with a plump and soft kind of frailty. They were like eerie figures in a dream. And all we could hear was the rustling of their clothes as they circled happily around us. Their faces weaved in smiles. <laughs> Why, they're not savage at all. They're very lovely and gentle little people. Yes, but there's something terribly wrong with them. Well, uh, how do you mean? They seem to have the minds of five-year-olds. Well, how do you expect them to be? Far ahead of us, of course. Incredibly ahead of us in knowledge, in science. Look at them. Children. They seem to be happy in this huge garden of theirs. Dudley, I've changed my mind. Let's stay. Maybe we should enjoy spending a few days with our little friends. The little people led us home into their valley. They lived in colossal buildings, sleeping all together in one huge hall, eating in another, playing and frolicking in the sunshine. <laughs> and we lived with them for days in utter contentment. One afternoon, Dudley and I walked along the banks of the great river. Philby, have you noticed that the little people all wear the same clothes? They have the same soft, hairless skin, the same feminine roundness of limbs. I wonder if it's because they're all vegetarians. They're vegetarians because they have to be. You haven't come across any horses or dogs or cattle of any kind, have you? No, Professor. Now that you mention it... With good reason. All extinct by now. Just as the dinosaur is with us. Such a strange and different place our Earth has become. Yes, I, I actually prefer it in some ways. It's less noisy, more pastoral. With a little sheep for people. 
pardon? You know what I'm talking about, Philby. As a scientist, I want to learn all there is to know about them and their culture, but I find myself frustrated at the lack of, well... Humanity. Yes, exactly. With the exception of that girl we rescued, any time I try to communicate with them, they all break out into laughter. <laughs> I was trying to teach them some of them English, but I began to feel like an unpopular schoolmaster had missed children. Very disinterested children. One moment they come up to us with eagerness, and then the next they wander away to something else. You sound if you're, as if you're disgusted. Well, perhaps. It seems to me that we've happened on mankind upon the wane. It's sunset, if you will. What makes you say that? Strength is the outcome of need. Security sets a premium on feebleness. We come from a time when we're trying to make life more comfortable with electricity, connected with telegraphs and wires, and more secure and convenient with the power of steam. All these things are making our lives better. A true civilizing process. How can that be bad? What happened? Where did we go wrong? Come now, Philby. The work of ameliorating and improving the conditions of life must have gone steadily on to a climax. One triumph of a united humanity over nature had followed another. Things that are for us mere dreams had become projects deliberately put in hand and carried forward. And the harvest is before us, in these playful grown-up children, devoid of ambition. Oh, what a waste. I can't put my finger on it, Dudley, but it doesn't add up. There's something strange here, something hidden away, silent. The year 100,080 may look pretty, but I can't help feeling that we're being spied on. <laughs> you know, we think alike, Philby. See this? Well, those are the control levers of the time machine. I took the precaution of removing them and putting a master padlock on the main switches. I don't much fancy the idea of someone riding away with it into another century and leaving us here for the rest of our lives. Oh, that makes me feel a little better. <sighs> this city is so completely different now. I can make out, out a few geographical landmarks, uh, an ancient building from our time here and there, but even the river seems to be miles from where it used to flow. Yes, quite extraordinary. Hmm. Come on, then. Let's head back to the little people's shelter and gather our things. I've seen enough of this... Paradise. I'm inclined to agree with you. Wait, Dudley. Do you know where we are? Yes, of course. This is near where we landed. I thought so. I wasn't sure. Why did you ask? I can't see the machine anywhere. What? The machine's not here. They've taken it away. They've stolen it. Uh, this is where it was, right? It was right here. Look, Philby. Tracks. Look here. Where they've dragged it. Over here. Uh, come along. Down this path, look! Right there! The monument! They took it to the monument! The tracks! Stop at those brass doors in the base! Open up, you little thieves! The doors! They're locked! Dudley, did you hear that? Something's behind the doors. It sounds like movement and faint laughter, but... But what? Nothing. The machine must be in there. Yes! Inside, let's go. Look for something to pry open the doors or break them down. We must get in there. Come on. How, how can we? What can we use? Here, use the ladders. All right, I'll try. Break them down on three. One, two, three. It's no good, Dudley. The solid will never break through. Never? Never? There's got to be a way. There's always a way. The doors are solid. I spent three years building that machine. I am not going to let a simple door stand in the way of our only way home. Oh, I've just realized. We may never go home again. Why take the machine? Why? 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 We were caught in the year 100,080. The time machine was gone. The brass doors of the monument held. Our retreat was cut off. The thin line by which we could make our own way back home. Back to our own time. Our own people. Back to 1902 was broken. And the little people's language was still a mystery. Any time we tried to communicate with them, it was met by howls of laughter. But it wasn't hostile. They weren't taunting us. Their attitude was innocent. They were more like simple wandering children. Only one. The young woman whose life we had saved in the first day became really friendly, 
and was able to tell us her name. It was Weena. She always kept close. She went with us wherever we walked and slept near us at night in the hall. She'd always make us garlands and bring us flowers, which she would sometimes drop in our pockets. The very thing became somewhat of a mystery to her, along with grass or whatever she fancied at the time. I was pleasantly surprised that Dudley wasn't furious at her for this. I suppose the main thing was, we had a friend. And as time went on, we were able to teach her a few words in English. Now that we could share ideas, we doubled our efforts like men racing against the clock, so that we might speak to her and discover the secret of our immense loss. We were talking to her one night, after the others had gone to sleep. No, not we, Dudley. No. How can you be so sure your people didn't steal the machine? Aren't there any thieves among them? Are they all perfect? Not so loud, Dudley. You'll wake them. Besides, she doesn't understand. The thief must be sleeping somewhere in this hall. Weena, they take machine? No, Dudley, no! Who then? Who took it, Weena? We are friends. Yes. We must have machine. Yes, Dudley, yes! Who took machine? Other people? Not yours? Other? What about those doors, Weena? Doors open? No, no! Weena, machine in there must open! No, no! Not open! Not open! Bad! Bad! Okay. Oh, all right, all right. Never mind. Go to sleep. Get some rest. Yes. Dudley, s sleep now. What's to become of us, Philby? Are we caught here in this century? To spend our lives with the little people in their secret? We'll go back to the monument tomorrow. We'll find a way of breaking in. Uh, good night, Dudley. <sighs> Dudley? Dudley! Yeah? Did you just... <sighs> there it was again! What? Something on my face. Cold. Filthy to the touch. On my face. And in my hair. It's cold. It's death. Dudley! You're right. There's something in here with us. Oh, it smells up the grave. What was it? I don't know. But look at them. Look at the little people. It's as though they've been stampeded. Let's get out of here. I want some fresh air. We went quickly from the hall and outside away from the little people. The moon was full just overhead and it was close to dawning. There was a faint sound speeding close behind us. And we turned, our nails ragged, our muscles tensed. But it was only Weena coming swiftly to join us. Dudley, Philby, Philby, Dudley, I'm afraid, it's dark. Then there is something. What do you mean, Weena? Dark what? Dark, dark things, dark place, night. Why should it be? Why should they be afraid of the night, Dudley? It's not the night alone. Dark place, that's our clue. Perhaps it's something underground. It was another day. We had wandered into a lovely wooded place, about a mile from the community. Suddenly, Weena screamed. Fill me! We stopped short. A pair of glaring eyes were fixed upon us. As we stood there petrified, the thing, a little ape-like figure, rushed across our path and disappeared into the clearing about thirty yards away. What was it? I couldn't see it too well. It seemed to be a, a dull white thing, with white hair on its head and on its back. It looked like a small ape. It was running on all fours, with its arms held very low. Weena! Weena, what was it? Morlock! A Morlock! Who are the Morlocks? What are they? Weena, tell me. No! No! Let, let's go over and see where it disappeared. Come along, Philby. In the clearing, we found a round, well-like opening. Dudley and I leaned over and looked down a deep shaft. A small white creature was retreating down a ladder in the well. Like a human spider, its large white eyes watching us as it went swiftly down. Then, it disappeared in the shaft. Philby, did you see it? Like an ape? Yes, but also like a man. So there are two species of men in this world. Yes. The little people above the ground. This obscene thing, this bleached monster below. That white looking, 
common to animals that live in the dark, like huge rats, like worms that are cold to the touch. I know because they've touched me. Philby, you can feel the air being sucked down into the shaft? Yes. The earth must be tunneled enormously here under our feet. These monsters must live in the tunnels. I think we now know who saw our time machine. Yes, then. Then we'll go down and have a look. No, no, not go. Why not, Weena? Morlocks, you never come back. Oh, we must have a machine, my dear. You wait for us here. No, no! And so we went down, our heels ringing on the small metallic bars that were meant for creatures so much smaller than us. Down we climbed, down, down, ever in darkness, ever it seemed into the center of the earth and to the core of the world. How much longer? We won't know until we reach the bottom. Can't be much further. Do you hear that? Like machinery. We're almost there. Thank heaven for that. Uh, All right, Philby. I'm on the bottom. Come along, just a few more steps. Now, give me your hand, Philby. Good. Uh, We're here. Yes, in the land of the Morlocks. Do you have a match? Uh, Yes, here. There seems to be a large vaulted chamber at the end of this passage. What do you suppose they'll do if they catch us? I have no idea. Better take care not to be caught. Ah, another match. That... that throbbing noise. Probably their ventilating system. Pumping the air down. There must be thousands upon thousands of these Morlocks living under the earth. We haven't seen any yet. Except for our friend who came down ahead of us. Why do you suppose they wanted our time machine? I think they wanted us, not the machine. And we have come to them. We must! It's our only chance! You know something, Philby? If that noise does come from the air pumps... Yes? Why is it so stuffy here? So oppressive? I noticed that too. (laughs) Dudley, what's that strange smell? Blood. Blood. Light another match. Dudley, look straight ahead. On the white metal table. It's set for a meal. Yes. A small haunch. Do you see? Meat. We know that the cattle are extinct. Then, what do they feed on these Morlocks? Don't you know? Oh, yes, I know. Oh, another match. Uh, yes, right here, Dudley. I have no more. I've used our last match. What ill planning. To think I didn't even bring a Kodak with us. A lot of good it would do if we never made it back. Of course. Well, without matches, we have no choice but to return to the surface. Come on. Right behind you. At any rate, we know the secret now. The Morlocks living here underground. They are the masters of this age, and our friends up above are merely fatted cattle, fed by the Morlocks, clothed, supplied, and housed until the day when they're cut out of their herd and brought underground as food. It's not the fading utopia. No. This is the future you're looking at. This is our future. Dudley! What is it? In this darkness, I felt hands. Cold hands. There are pipes along the walls. Do you feel them? Some are loose. Did you get one? Give it to me. Use it as a weapon. Lash out at the Morlocks! Uh, 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 get away from me! They're here beside me! I'm coming down like get away from you! Use the pipe I gave you! Use the metal pipe! I uh, am! Uh, uh, They're all around us! This way! Follow me this way! Back this way! We went back in that evil darkness, fighting every step as we went, back to those projecting bars, kicking and clawing ourselves loose from their talon-grasping hands, and climbing up again, up towards daylight and freedom, away from their stench and the eagerness of their icy hands, and they did not follow, for daylight was their enemy and their great fear. And we lived among the lush gardens of the little people, like prisoners, like men without reprieve, like men who are dead but still walk the earth. For the time machine was locked away behind great brass doors, and we knew we could never force them open. 
Then one day, Wiener told us of an old building, an ancient sagging structure that had survived through many ages and was filled with many curious objects. A museum. That's what it must be. A museum, Philby. Perhaps from some earlier time. I'm in no mood to go looking at a museum. Don't you see? Specimens are medically sealed in museums. Perhaps there are things, weapons, machinery, something we can use. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. If we could find some dynamite or gunpowder or something. We could blast those doors. We could get in. Where is this place, Wiener? This old building that no one ever goes near. I take you. Uh, it's not far. A chance, Professor. A slim one, but a chance nonetheless. All day we wandered through the great ruined halls. The building had been deserted, unused for perhaps a century. The childlike men of that time had long since ceased to care about anything but their own personal comforts. It was late afternoon and growing dark when we came upon the chemical section. We found nothing useful to us until then. Now came the worst disappointment of all. And it's dust. All of it. It's been dust for countless centuries. Another dead end. It's hopeless. We were out of our minds to hope that nitrates would retain their form for a hundred thousand years. We go now, if nothing here? Wait just a moment. There's something in this case. Well, you can break it with your lever. Stand back a little. <laughs> a box of matches, medically sealed. Wait, let me see it. Oh, why, wow, they're perfect. Solid and sound. They're not even damp. What should we do with them? Burn down those brass doors? Well, you better keep them. You can't tell. Philby. What? On the floor. You see them? Small, narrow footprints leading away into the darkness at the end of the gallery. <laughs> Dudley! We better go. Pick Weena up and carry her. We're going to have to make a run for it. Now, don't be frightened, my dear. <laughs> It'll be all right. <laughs> go on! Run! We came out of the gloom of that place into the deeper gloom of dusk, and suddenly we saw. We were trapped. All around us were the Morlocks. They were there by the thousands. Surrounding us and coming closer, the long, even line of deathly white, their eyes blinking in the half-light, their tiny mouths alive with appetite. Philby, the matches! Yes, I have the matches. Light a fire here in this dry grass. The forest around us is dry. Hurry, man! We'll have an inferno here in a minute. Friends don't like light or heat. The fire leaped high to the heavens, and the countryside was ablaze. The Morlocks turned in fear, blinded by the glare. Some of them plunged into the raging flames, and the rest faded away from the fog. But they had left a narrow passageway for our retreat, and we fled down a long corridor of leaping flames and eastern heat. We fled towards safety to the community of the little people. As we ran, we passed the huge monument. Of his great bronze doors were locked tight in our time machine. And suddenly, in the glare of the distant fire, we saw something that stopped us short. They're open. Philby! The doors are open! No! Not go in, Dudley, no! Oh, it's a trap! The wedding for is inside! Waiting or not, we're going in! Dudley, it's suicide! It'll take me one minute to screw the levers on again. Then I touch them and we're away! All right. I'll try to give you your one minute. Good man! No! No, go, not leave me. Now you, you, my dear, you're tied around my neck. You're coming home with us. All right, let's go. Wait, look, the machine, they haven't harmed it. My goodness, it looks like they've cleaned and oiled it. <laughs> it's a trap, all right. They'll be around us any moment. I don't see them yet. Come on now, quickly. <laughs> Doors, Dudley! They're closed! It's pitch black again! Just get in the seat. I'll be ready in a moment! I waited for the hum that would signal our departure. There in the darkness, the Morlocks were finally upon us. Cold, persistent fingers swarmed over my body, tugging at me and pulling me away from the machine. I held tight to Wiener as any man would hold fast to life. I tried to kick them away with my feet. Fill me! Fill me! Hurry, Dudley! Hurry! I must fix these levers quickly or we're done! Ah, Philby, we're away. We're gone. And so, 
we came home again. Back into the very minute in which we had left. Back into just after 10, October 6th, 1902. We are in Dudley's laboratory again, motionless. Yes, yes, we made it. Are you all right? I'm all right. Good. And, and Weena? Weena isn't with us, Professor. What happened? They tore her from my hands. At the last second, they got their filthy cold talons around her. I tried to save her, I couldn't. I still have a piece of her tunic here in my fist. A little piece of her tunic, Dudley. Nothing else. <laughs>